One of my favorite things to do in Illustrator is to work with what's called an opacity mask. Now, these are types of masks that allow you to hide some parts of an object, but use a gradient or some types of transparency effects to do it. So we can use a picture if we want to, we can use a shape, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna come out here and draw, let's say, a star. I'm gonna come onto my page and just draw. And it's using a lot of the, the things that I did before, so it's got the same kind of styling. I'll just get the star out there, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a color in it. So I'll come over to the swatches panel, use a color fill, let's say red. Now, if I wanted to create an opacity mask on this where it fades away in the star, and this is a lot, this is great for like reflections and things like that, I would need to create another shape here. Now, there's a couple ways to do this, but this is probably the easiest, I think. I'll create a rectangle and just stick it over the top. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to fill it with a gradient. Now, you guys, an easy way to fill with a gradient, and usually it's black to white to start with, is to literally just press the period key. That should fill it with a gradient. Now, what I want to do now is just select both objects and create what's called an opacity mask. The mask is the top object. So I'll go back to my selection tool. I'll select both objects just by clipping them there. Go to the transparency panel. Now there's, there's several different kind of masks in here and I don't want you to confuse the two, but if you guys right click or control click on these objects right now, kind of right where they overlap, you will see clipping mask. That's a little different. That just clips and doesn't let you do opacity. If we want to make an opacity mask, I need to come to the transparency panel over here, click on the panel menu to the right, choose make opacity mask, a couple ways to do that. And you're gonna see that it's actually clipping using opacity masks. Now the interesting thing about this, you guys, is you gotta you gotta remember what you're doing. I forget this stuff all the time, but if you look over here in the transparency panel, it's kind of like a Photoshop layer now. I don't know if you guys have ever done masks in Photoshop, but you can see the object you're masking, which could be a picture, it could be anything, and then the mask itself. The way this works is whatever is selected is what you're editing. You'll notice a little link icon between the two. With the selection tool, if I come out here and click and drag, it's gonna move both the mask and the object being masked. If I wanna move them independently, I can do that pretty easily, but I'll show you that in a second. Now to edit the mask, we need to come over to transparency panel, click on the mask itself, and you'll see it selects that rectangle that I drew earlier. Now I can change or edit it however I want to. So with it selected out here, I could select let's say the gradient tool, click and drag in certain different directions, and you guys can see exactly what's gonna happen here. So I can change the actual you know, gradient. Over here you can actually see the gradient, how it, how it occurs. Now we can also do things like this. If you come to the mask itself, if you shift click on it, you can temporarily disable it. it kinda hides it out there. Shift click again, and it's back. A couple different things we could do. You'll also notice there are shortcuts out here we can use, but if you are done with the mask, let's say, you can delete it, do whatever you want to it right now. You can even rotate it or transform it. If you're done with the mask, what we wanna do is you wanna make sure to click back on the object here, the thumbnail for the object. Click back on it, and that allows you then to start editing and changing and transforming. Now, if you decide, I'm gonna go back to the selection tool here, to release the mask. You don't want the mask anymore? A couple ways we could do this. You come up to the transparency panel, click on the arrow up there, the transparency panel menu, you'll see release opacity mask. Easy way to do that so we have two shapes back. Now you guys will also see disable in here. It's another way to do it. Now if I come back out here, if you wanna move one or the other, let's say the object or the mask independent of the other one, you can click this little link icon with the object thumbnail selected, click it, it allows you to move whatever you want to move, the object or the mask. And you can see exactly what's happening here. If I go to the mask, click on the mask to select it, you'll see the mask. I can then click and drag and move the mask where I want it. So there's a lot of great things that we can do here. Now, to relink them, to take a look here, you're going to see I need to click back on the thumbnail for the object, click between the two and relink them so they both move together. Clip allows you to clip inside the mask edge if I turn off clip, if you watch this, I'll come back and click on the mask. It allows me to move it. You'll notice that it no longer clips off the edge of the mask here. That's what the clip stands for. If I turn clip back on, you'll see exactly what it's gonna do. Now, if I want, I can also invert the mask. It just goes basically the opposite of the mask itself. That gets kind of confusing. I like to just draw the gradient in there to make it simple. Click back on the object. You gotta make sure to do that, you guys. As a matter of fact, if I click back on the thumbnail over here, if you take a look up the, the uh, bar up here, you'll see opacity mask slash opacity mask. And if you go to the layers panel and take a look in there, you'll see that you just have access to the mask right now.
So we need to make sure that we click back on the thumbnail. Working with opacity masks is really not that bad. It's actually pretty fun. A lot of great things we can do with them. If you want to get a little bit more you know, crazy with them, I actually will create another tip which shows you how to create multiple objects to be used as a mask. But this is a nice easy way to get yourself an easy, simple opacity mask.